Hello, John, the expert. Hello, Joe, the integrator. Nice to be here. Thank you for taking the time. Absolutely. As you know, we, we, we sell more and more robot cells, and uh, we see more demands from the customers to handle bags. And we are not experts in, in, in handling bags with vacuum. I actually brought some bags with me, different type okay. of bags that uh, we need to handle. Uh, and of course, the end customers have uh, uh, great demands on speeds. Uh, and we see problems to handle this in a good way. Uh, historically, we have we worked a lot with uh, uh, this type of cap and a big blower uh, to generate vacuum, but uh, we don't we don't really succeed all the time to handle all these different type of bags. So, so I'm going to ask you, what kind of what do we need to think of? Can you give me some tips? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, cups today are designed for bags, uh, and, and traditionally. You can use a cup like this to work on simpler bags, but today the, the bags are getting more uh, complicated to, to okay. handle in, in production. So the cup needs to be able to adapt to the bag in a good way. So there are actually generally three things to, to consider when you actually choose a cup. Okay. You need to be able to choose the right cup for the bag to be handled. Okay. And then the placement of the cup, meaning okay. how you place the cup onto on the, the bag, bag. Yeah. and the amount. Uh, of cups is also a good thing to, to, to keep in mind. And then the engine behind it, the vacuum flow okay. and the vacuum level behind the whole system is also critical okay. to understand. So it's more to think of than I thought. I, uh, yes. <laughs> but maybe you can show me a little bit the difference with the different type of, of, of cups here on these bags I brought with me. Absolutely. Okay, Johnny. So, uh, Maybe we can test some of these uh, uh, specific cups, dedicated cups, uh, versus this more generic cup that we use today. So I can see the difference. So Absolutely. If we, we take this stand-up pouch. Uh, uh, can you show me what kind of grip you get with uh, with the generic cup bag cup? Exactly. I that? have a, a system here that has a gripper uh, on each end, uh, an own engine. So this cup is on this decentralized unit, and then we can compare it on this side, okay. this decentralized, and also read with these vacuum gauges Perfect. how much vacuum you get. So what, uh, you picked that one then? And I picked this one as a cup for standard pouches. This cup has been around for a long time, but it's designed for bags specifically. Typically these bags that we see here. So if you so if I try to grip with that first, let me see. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay, it's not bad. But definitely better, like 20% more. 20% more, exactly. And that's what you see because it's, it seals off better to the bag itself. Wow. But, I mean, that, the stand-up pouches is, uh, I mean, we, we tend to get decent grip on, that, on, on them with, with, with the generic. And but that I, you will, But absolutely. if I take the, the aluminum foil bag and you test with the generic. And then I, I can choose another cup that uh, is a later cup that was designed for stand-up pouches, but also bags like these. But show me first with the with the generic bag cap. Yeah, and here you can see that because of the bag is actually Not, yeah that that's so what thin. we typically see. Yeah, yeah. You cannot. You need to compensate with this with yeah. flow. But if I take this one, wow, it's much better. Wow, big difference. The most tricky bags <coughs> that we have to deal with today is the is the is the these type of flimsy plastic bags that we see in e-commerce mm -hmm. and uh, uh, and also other places they can be really difficult do you have uh, any any specific cup for that yes it is uh, it, we have and and this is extremely difficult to lift as you say and um, it's actually difficult to <laughs> pick up with your hand as you can feel it yeah, we have this cup flimsy. that was actually designed for 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 e-commerce and all the packages in that environment so it's not a specific bag cup, but it works really well on this uh, to, to be able to adapt to difficult objects. And um, I will show you the difference here then. Yeah, just show me with that generic first. I guess it will not pick at all. Ah, a bit, yeah. But it creates uh, sometimes, but most of the time... Creates it creates a little bit of vacuum, but not much. And this, of course, you can compensate with flow. Yeah. But if you take this one... Big difference. Wow. Super Impressive. Difference. Impressive. Yeah. Okay, so now I know uh, that it's very important to pick the right type of suction cup for the 
for the bags to be for the bag to be handled. Uh, but you also mentioned that it's very important to use the right number of cups and also to place them on the right place on the bag. Yes. So how should I think there? As I mentioned before, to start with four cups could always be a good way. Yeah. If, the, if it's light, you could probably use two, but then in one direction, it will always overswing in that. So to stabilize it with four is always good. And this gripper here, which is square, works quite well on this package here. That could work quite nice, I think, yeah. uh, as, a, as a system. That's a there. centralized then. But here on this bag, it doesn't really fit. No. So, so how, where do I place the cup? How do I know that? Yeah, if we look at the cups and just place them out like this, this could probably work in a very good way. Here you can also see that the, the cups are tilted a little, yeah. a little bit uh, towards the bag. And that's also a factor to consider. And the distance between there and there, is that also a factor to consider? It's a very important factor to consider. Uh, generally, when you place the cup, you shouldn't put them too close to each other. Okay. And I, I've tested it quite a bit in the past. and. Uh, a good rule of thumb is actually to place them at least a third of the diameter of the lip. Uh, here we have a, a, an A4 paper. Think of this being the, the size of the bag. The size of the bag. The size yeah. of the bag. So you can actually squeeze out that material and use the bag and fold. Then you fold it in thirds for four cups. Equal. As good as you can. And by doing so, you are creating four marks where to start to place ah, the cups. I get it. So, here are the cross sections where you can place the cups. That was super good. And Easy to understand. Very good. And then the important thing is that if the cup now is bigger than this and the lips tend to get in touch with each other and you don't have this third of distance, you need to move the cups out okay, to the center. Along that. To bring, bring more move. Ah. So the, the, the bag can adapt to the suction cup when you create uh, the lift. And this is something you have tested and seen that by doing this you get a very good effect. It helps you to do, understand where to place the cups to very start good. with. Okay, so now I know uh, uh, where to place the cups, but how should I uh, attack the cup? Uh, should I come from straight or with an angle, or do you have any tip around that? Absolutely. I mean, if you place the cup now in, in your position that you believe yeah. that you can do, you can also almost here with the bag see the tilt. Okay, so, so that will help me guide the tilt I need. This could be a good angle of approach to start with. But don't tilt it too much. But you can also simulate this and see it because the bag will move with the material itself and will actually be adapted and move with the placement. So the best angle is to actually to try it. But a little angle is always a little bit better than none Perfect. most of the times. Very good, Johnny. Uh, you also mentioned the vacuum system to be uh, critical. And we see that the end users are asking us for a system that has less energy consumption. And uh, uh, is there anything we should think of uh, here and how can we minimize energy consumption? Absolutely, Joseph. And I, I will show you uh, uh, the difference here. And I, I've, I've re-equipped the gripper system here. So here I have a much larger pump unit and, and, or engine. So a much bigger engine. Much yeah. bigger engine. This is actually four times the energy uses. Wow. But of course, this will also compensate for the flow. So you have four times more flow in this. So this generic cup will work quite well on these bags now. So you can actually get it to function. And this is typically what happens when you use an, a blower or something, when you have a lot of flow. But they cost a lot of energy, of yeah. course. So the cup here, to, the, to its design, can use less energy. Show, so, show me the difference. So now when we show... Yeah, pretty good grip. And you compensate it with that. Yeah, you get equally good with yes. that one. Yeah. So they are basically the same, but this runs only a fourth of the energy. And what about this one? It's a little bit more tricky. It's about, yeah, 40 percent. 40. Yeah. So. So they're basically the get same. Get it. Get it. So now so with the cup right cup uh, and the right engine behind, you can get it to function really well.
So, Johnny, I have learned a lot today. Maybe you can summarize the most important things for me just before I leave. Certainly. First of all, take the right cup to the right bag. So yeah. you actually choose the right cup for, for the job. And then I will leave you this paper. Oh, perfect. The placement of the cup is also very, very important. Yeah. And also remember the engine size for each cup. Have the right engine the right to energy flow, optimize. Or energy optimize for the cup system, for, for the vacuum system. Thanks a lot, Johnny. I'm sure I will be back. We have constantly challenges and now I know where I have the expert. Very Thank good. You very much. Thank you. Welcome bye back. Bye-bye.